So I did ask you guys what the probability of two heterozygous individuals crossing it is to one to two to one. The phenotypic ratio is three to one. So a Punnett square is a model that predicts the likely outcome of a genetic cross. Punnett square shows all of the genotypes that could result from a given cross. And the simplest Punnett square consists of a square divided into four boxes. The only time you will truly have to do a full Punnett square is if both parents are heterozygous, like we talked about. And the combination of letters in each box is going to represent one possible genotype of the offspring. It's possible. It doesn't mean all four are going to be made in that probability or statistic probability. What does that mean? It means if you do have two parents that are indeed heterozygous, we'll do big A, little a, okay, and we cross them, one parent will go here, either giving an A or a little a, the other parent will go here, either giving a big A or a little a, okay, so this possible zygote would be homozygous dominant. This one would be homozygous recessive. There's one there and one there. And then this one would be heterozygous, as would, oops. Uh-oh, my pen's not going to work now. Yeah, it is. I lied. There you go. So there's two of these like this. That's why it's a one to two to one genotypic ratio. But three of them would be dominant, whereas this one would be recessive. So the phenotype Please don't talk right now. The genotype is 1 to 2 to 1, whereas the phenotype is 3 to 1. So in a monohybrid homozygous cross, all offspring will be heterozygous. That means if I cross the two parental pure generations, all F1 will be big little, dominant recessive. But we'll still express the dominant phenotype. Now in a monohybrid heterozygous cross, the genotypic ratio will be 1 to 2 to 1, and the phenotype, again, will be 3 to 1. Do you need to memorize that and know that? Yes, that needs to just be a, a given fact when we're talking about genetics. So over here we have a few of Mendel's little uh, deeds that he did. Okay? And in your notes, you guys have them filled in. But if I look here, we know that big Y, big Y is going to be yellow. And we know that big Y, little y is also going to be yellow, whereas little, little will be green. And this is what is known as Mendel's parental generation up here, right? And when you cross those two parents, the big Y, big Y cross with big Y, little y, you end up with your F1 generation. And over here is looking at the two F1 generations crossing to give us what? Oops. Let's just keep crossing. Our F2 generation. So down here is the F2. And that's where you see the 1 to 2 to 1 and the 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. Now, a Punnett square shows the possible outcomes of a cross, but it can also be used to calculate probability within each outcome. So probability, again, is the likelihood that a specific event, or in this case, phenotype or genotype, will occur. It can, uh, probability can be calculated and expressed in many ways, sometimes as a decimal, words, percentage, or a fraction. And whatever I ask you for, you need to give me that specific type. So if I say I want a percentage, I want 25%, not a decimal 0.25, or I don't want one-fourth. Although they all mean the same thing, you need to give the correct uh, type of probability. Now, formulas can be used to predict the probabilities that specific alleles will be passed on to the offspring. The pro uh, possible results of a heterozygous cross are similar to those of flipping two coins at once. And you guys flipped coins last week and had fun making babies and then having the babies cross. And hopefully you guys were all on task. Most of you were, I can tell. If I took your babies, it probably meant maybe you weren't. Or you were absent. That happens, too. So a pedigree is a diagram that shows how a trait is inherited over several generations of a family. When you see the word pedigree, what do you think of? Dog food, right? Me, too. So a pedigree can be used to help a family understand a genetic disorder. 
So they use these actually in hospitals when they sit down with patients. And a genetic disorder is a disease or a disorder that can be inherited. And a pedigree can help answer questions about three aspects of inheritance, sex linkage, dominance, and heterozygosity. And we're going to walk through a few examples together here to help show you how you would do that. So we talked about Mr. Mason being a carrier of blue eyes, right? So let's just pretend that blue eyes is a disease, okay? And I know it's not, but let's just pretend it is. Squares will be males, females will be circles always in pedigrees. My wife has blue eyes, so my wife has the disease, right? It's kind of mean calling it a disease. And that's what we're doing. So if they exhibit the disease, we're going to color it in. So so do I know my wife's genotype within this pedigree? Yeah, it's almost like it's recessive, right? Do I know mine? Not necessarily, right? So we're pretending this isn't blue eyes. We're pretending it's a disease now. But let's say I look at my children. Looks like I have a daughter, two sons, and a daughter. I don't really, but today I get to have a son. That's kind of fun. I get two of them. So let's say they cross, and let's say this daughter has the blue eye disease. And let's say the son does, and let's just say this daughter does as well, just for fun. So. I know if I had three children that had the disease, what do I know about me? That I'm a carrier, right? And that I would have to color in half of my pedigree. You guys get this? So it tells me I'm heterozygous. So I, dominance is going to be the white, whereas full in is going to be the recessiveness. Now, the other thing I need to do now is I can start to look at offspring. I know that all of these, let's say, let's say all of those are, are fine. None of those have the disorder, okay? What do I know about them all if none of them have the disorder? What? Wouldn't my other son? Oh, yeah, good, good observation because that would have had to come from here, right? And so I could then in turn, oh, that was the only other one. Very good. So just like here, that's the same th idea I was getting at here. Even if these were all normal and had brown eyes, I, they would all be carriers, right? Now, if that were the case, if every time this individual over here, this male, whose brown eyes gave a big one, what could we assume this other one is? Probably that, right? It's like, kind of like doing a test cross. So we would say it's safe to assume he is not a carrier, okay? And what if, like, even one of these children had the trait? What do I know about all the children? I knew they were all carriers because of the mom, but now I also know that the dad must be carrying, right? Because otherwise I wouldn't end up with that individual. So. We'll forget the fact that these grandchildren somehow met and they're having children, so we're going to ignore that, okay? Now, let's pretend they're guinea pigs, right? So, or maybe from Kentucky. I don't know how that works. All right. Sorry, I can't resist the southern jokes. Okay, so the sex chromosomes X and Y are going to carry genes for many characters other than gender. Uh-oh, now we're going to talk about sex chromosomes, which are different than autosomes. So far, all we've talked about is autosomes. Now, a sex-linked gene is located on either an X or a Y chromosome, and traits that are not expressed equally in both sexes are commonly what are called sex-linked traits. Color blindness is an example of a sex-linked trait that is expressed more in males than females. How many of you know a colorblind male? Raise your hand. Okay. Put your hands down. How many of you know a colorblind girl? You do? Yeah? That's rare. She's rare. I'll show you why. Okay? You know, they can be, but it's extremely rare. It's extremely rare. I'll show you why here. So we know 
right here that this female, so we're going to start with at the top, we know she is XX. Otherwise, she'd be a boy, XY, correct? And all I know is anywhere that it's black is going to be colorblind in this case. Do any females show colorblindness up here? No. That's a dead giveaway. You guys, if you were taking the SAT or the ACT someday and you see a pedigree where all the squares are dark, that's called sex-linked traits. Okay, well, I'm the M stuff or whatever. Okay? So how would I end up and why does the boy get it and not the girl? Here, that's the question, right? So we know that this boy has an X and a Y. We know this girl has an X and an X. Okay? And we... This isn't my, the child of this anyway, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Where did this boy get his Y from? His dad, right? Where did this girl get her Y from, or her X from? Her mom and her dad. Now, if I don't have another X to cover up the colorblind gene that I must have got from my mom... I would be colorblind because a, a boy's only have one X, right? So if that gene's there, it's going to get expressed. You get it from your mom. She's a carrier, right? And we didn't know she was a carrier until she had a colorblind boy. How do they carry it? Oh, because colorblindness is recessive. You have a good one that will overpower it. The only way a girl would be colorblind is she has two colorblind X's, which is very rare. Okay? So she gave one here. Now, if her daughter was uh, perfectly fine, she could, be, uh, she could be colorblind or she might have got the carrier. But look, look at her boy. What do we know? She did get the carrier because otherwise she would have had a normal son there. Do you get that? So when it's on just like one of the sex chromosomes, it's said to be sex linked. Boys, male co uh, pattern baldness is the same way. Okay. Anybody have a grandfather on their mother's side who's bald? Sorry about your luck. Um, so it comes from your mom's ex. So you got your ex from your mom. Is your mom bald? Well, that's good because you got a 50-50 chance of being bald. Did you get it? Because you don't know if your mom gave you the good X or the bad X. Okay. Well, it doesn't. That, it's not here. It's up here. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah, I know. We haven't gone over this yet. So I am going to open up that sky. You guys weren't supposed to push that in yet. If you didn't get my remind, I'm going to open them all back up later. Only hit save and complete later until we've gotten through everything. Okay. So you guys get that? Yeah. Oh, well, here's what she's got going on. She's got two of them. Which means her dad is 100% must be colorblind, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me tell you how I knew that. So she told, me, she told me her friend, let's just look at your friend, is exhibiting colorblindness. We know... But if we go to her parents, we understand that her dad definitely has a colorblind trait. And he, he is colorblind. He'd have to be. Otherwise, she wouldn't be here. And the mom, is the mom colorblind? Okay. Then the mom's a carrier like that. Okay? You get that? So she got just bad luck for her. Carrie has. He doesn't have a – he will be colorblind. She will, she will not be – he will be. She will be. Okay. okay. Yeah. 50 50. Oh, if they're colorblind? Yeah. Still 50 50 because you control. Well, it depends if it's a boy or a girl, too, right? If it's a boy, it's 50 50. If it's a girl, it's like 1 to 2 to 1. What? So your dad's colorblind. You got an X from your dad, so you definitely at least are a carrier. I know you're just a carrier, otherwise you'd be colorblind. Okay. Yeah. So. Your 
So if a person has a trait that is autosomal, that means not a sex chromosome, and dominant, and has even one dominant allele, the dominant trait's going to show up. If a person has a recessive trait and only one recessive allele, he or she will not show that trait, but can still pass it on. It can be a carrier. If a person is either heterozygous or homozygous dominant for an autosomal gene, his or her phenotype will show the dominant trait. That's complete dominance. Now, if a person is homozygous recessive, his or her phenotype will show the recessive trait. And a recessive trait in a child shows that both parents were heterozygous carriers of that recessive allele. So two brown-eyed individuals can indeed have a blue-eyed child if they are both carriers. And then, of course, there's sex linkage, which likes to break all of the rules, make its new rules. So a Punnett square shows all the genotypes that can result from a given cross. Probability can be used to predict probabilities that affect, uh, I'm sorry, that specific alleles will be passed on to offspring and a pedigree can help answer questions about three aspects of inheritance, like sex linkage, dominance, and heterozygosity. They do use those pedigrees in hospitals when they're trying to figure out what the risk is of an individual uh, having a disease or disorder, things of that nature. All right, you guys.